Hey Dreamers, Bryce here from Midnight Notion, singer, songwriter, musician, and a big fan of Metallica, but I have no idea what my favorite Metallica song is. Could it be Cyanide? Let's use math to find out. Cue the intro. So Ted, give it to me now! For the best Metallica song! Cyanide, track number six from Death Magnetic, and even though this is the song that the band chose to play live, it was kind of like the single of the record, aside from, you know, obviously The Day That Never Comes, uh, I didn't really grasp on this song the same way that others did, and I think maybe that has to do with the fact that it got played so often. I wanted to hear the other tracks on the album, so while I do like this song, I do have to say that it's kind of my lower level favorites of the record. So. We're going to listen to it analytically. I can't grade this on my emotions. I can only grade it on the following categories. Composition, memorability, emotional response, instrumentation, and lyrics. Each category is a zero to four scale with a grand total of 20 possible points. We'll see at the end if this song has what it takes to get to the top 20. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because that could save thousands of people across the globe from cyanide poisoning. That's just what I heard. I don't know how it works. I don't make the rules. I just heard that that's what happens. Let's listen to the song. Oh, uh, before we get into it, this intro is actually Morse code. Did you know that? If you didn't know that already, dun, dun, dun. Ba, 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 dun, dun, dun. That's SOS. So somebody needs help in the intro. I wanted to count that because I think that there's some changes in this uh, in this song as far as time signature is concerned. Let's check it. Three, four, five, one, two. Yep, that's a 5-4 measure. Dun, 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 two, three, five. Uh, I, I counted it wrong when I was saying it out loud, but that, that crash and, and kick drum hit, that's a 5. So there's one 5-4 stuck right there at the end. Really interesting change. And now we got the bass and the build up to what was probably one of the best riffs on the record. I will say that. Uh, when I was following them when they were making this record, they had a site called Mission Metallica. Raise your hand if you followed along on Mission Metallica. They uploaded daily content, fly in the wall footage. Uh, it was really cool. And this song was one of the like trailer songs, if you will, like the record is coming sort of songs. So they knew pretty early on that this was going to be a hit, but I st I'm still, I don't know. I, I just feel like I like the rest of the record more. I don't know why. It's kind of a fuzzy bass. It's not just a straight DI. It's not just a, you know, there's, there's some sort of fuzz to what Rob is playing on the bass there. It's just holding out that low E and then we got this nice lick. Okay, I, I'm liking it a little bit more on this listen through. I've been kind of avoiding the song for a while, so I'm I'm now remembering. I think I know why. We'll get to it. I'll, I I know exactly why I don't typically gravitate towards this song, but this whole front half of the song, very excellent. Bum 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 bum. That's a hook. And then you'll notice that second time they come through, so they got the empty they say um, twice through. So empty they say death. And then they come back to it. Uh, they have like a bridging riff. Do, 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 do. That's kind of that in-between riff. Then they come back to it. Empty, they say. When it ends that second time. Bum, 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 bum. 
there's a higher guitar. Bum, 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 bum. It's really, really higher up. Uh, nice, nice. It's really cool. There's a, some cool chords going on in this. A lot of dissonant, sort of some tritone sort of feels. We've got that low fifth again. Uh, it, it's a, a lot of interesting things. So when, when they're playing with the root, note of the chord is on the A string of the guitar. They're actually barring it down and including the E string. So that's, it's the fifth of the chord, but it's lower than the one. So you get like a low fifth. You get like, I don't know the exact note, but if they were playing a D, it would be D over A, but it's not really D over A because A is part of the D power chord. So it makes sense if you think about it, if you really research your music theory and guitar work, it makes sense, but it's just kind of an interesting thickness to the chord. You know, that count is strange. Let me figure this out here. I think it's before the chorus where the change happens. Let me figure, let me go back one more. You know, I'll do it on the next chorus. We're gonna count it together. We're gonna see, I'm not gonna pull out the booklet. I know I have the booklet for the tabs for this record, but I'm gonna see if I can figure out the count. I think it's somewhere in that call your name, boom. Uh, I think that's where the change is, but we'll find out in the next chorus, maybe. <laughs> So that time there wasn't a 5-4 measure, dun dun dun, because that's just one and two, three. So maybe it was a 3-4, I don't know, it depends on how you're counting it. But now we have just a slightly shorter version of the bass riff and then back to the main riff again. I've been talking about this for 90 some videos now. Repetition gets boring. So when you have it the second time, it keeps it interesting. You're calling back to it. You're making a reference to what we know already, but you're moving forward. I like that. I like that a lot. The fourth time, Bill. Notice uh, the second time through the bum 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 bum. There's a higher guitar. I also want you to pay attention to what Lars does during that downbeat section. It's 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 uh, uh, snare 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 snare, and he's doing the double kick pedal. He's gonna do fills throughout there. It's a different fill almost every time they come through. So that's what's keeping things interesting. Okay, I think what's happening is there's just one little measure in there. Uh, the, 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 the rhythm is odd, right, for that chorus. Cyanide, I've already died. You're just the funeral I've been waiting for. And it's coming down on what feels like the one. And then they just chug on that E, but they only chug on the E for about, like, I think it's a 3-4 measure. Let's go back one more time. I just want to figure it out. Your name. Three. Okay, fine, I'll check the book. The book says that it is a 2-4 measure for Call Your Name. We got a 2-4 there. And then uh, Suicide is on the 1. Suicide, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I've been waiting 
is just a two four and then we're back to four four for so we're back to four four for the word four and then interestingly cyanide the psi is the one so you'd think cyanide you'd think that that'd be the downbeat but because of the way that they add in that two four measure and where everything comes in it's suicide on the one but cyanide is on the one so it's a really interesting pattern because the second time through even though it's doing the same thing, it's playing the same riff, it's singing the same line, because of the shift in the pattern, it's actually different the second time. This is very, very unique. You don't see this very often at all. So they have that one little two, four measure in there. And then at the end of the chorus, empty shell forever is a three, four measure. And then we're back to dun, 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 wow, wow, wow. So we're back to, um, they do a two, four measure at the end. Dun, dun, dun. And then the, the hits one, two, three, dun, dun. I guess, I don't know. This is really strange to me, but that's how they're tabbing it out here. And so that's what we're going to go with. There's a couple of two, four measures in there just thrown in at random. And I, I don't know. I just find that endlessly interesting. I think that makes the song very very, very intriguing to me. It's not something you get from a garage band. You can't just sit down and play it. You have to actually know where that transition is. Otherwise, especially as a drummer, you're going to be emphasizing the wrong hits. So really well done there. From a rhythm standpoint, I'm interested. <laughs> Okay, so I really love that part, this march, all on the snare, bum, ba dum bum, bum, bum. One thing that's always been really interesting to me, and I think it's in this book, I already put the book away, I'm not gonna bring it back out, but dun, 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 dun. They have a low D in there, dun, dun. And I know that they're tuned to standard tuning, so how the heck are they going dun, dun? Now, I think they could be layering in a guitar that is tuned down, but they cannot play the song in drop D. And even if they played it with a capo on, I don't know, it's, it's just weird. I think this is a studio only thing because with a five string bass, you can get that low D and still stay in standard tuning. You have to be standard for this song because of the low ba da 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 da. The main riff has got a low E under the ba da 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 da. They're still playing that low note, and then they have those ba ba da da ba ba da ba 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 da ba. You gotta have that low E for that. And if you have it tuned down to D, you can't. You'd have to go from from the second fret all the set fret. You'd have to go from the second fret all the way up and it's just it's a lot of movement to do in a really little time not possible so dun 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 dun, dun. you could do an open note on the a and uh, d string but that doesn't give you that low d dun dun it's a very interesting thing that they only really can pull off in the studio live they're gonna have to just futz with whatever they're playing it's very interesting to me i've always just been interested in that one note uh, the rest of this section, to me, feels really wonky, and I think it goes on for way too long. I hope you don't disagree, because, I don't know, it's a cool pattern, but it just breaks the song for me. I think there's something to do with the fact that one of the guitars is bum, 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 fall and it falls off and then the other guitar bum, 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 and it keeps holding on so when the one guitar drops out and the other is still holding it feels like one of them gave up and one of them is like hey where did you go oh i'll come back dun, 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 boom, boom, and it feels like the drum fill i mean it's there um it's it's really cool pattern okay i don't i don't want you to think that i'm hating on this pattern because bum, 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 ba -da -da, ba -da -da. sounds cool Cool. They've got sort of a, I don't know, it's almost got some sort of a mode feel to it, right? We feel like we're kind of throwing back to something like Wherever I May Roam. we got sort of that Middle Eastern vibe going on here. But it just, I, it's it, it broke the flow of the song. Yesterday I was talking about flow. You've been banging your head a certain way, and to 
to just go into a new pattern. You know, we're three and a half minutes into the song, and I suppose it's a six and a half minute long song. We're at the halfway point, and it just um, it feels... I don't know how to explain it. It feels different. It feels different in the wrong way. Does that make sense? It's not bad. It just feels misplaced. That's my whole comment. Not bad. Misplaced. Is that rain or are they tears? The stained your concrete face for years. The crying, weeping, shedding strife. Year after year, life after. So now that section beautiful i love his singing i like how we bring it down we have just clean guitars but every once in a while you can hear like a tease of this distortion it's like they have a a pedal between clean and distorted there's like a little whap in there it's not a it's not a pedal but it sounds like we're getting just a, a little hint of that grunge in there and then we pull it back listen to it the next time around it's really cool but it's unfortunate that this brilliant section has to be bookended with this wonky rhythm and then we finish this section with more of the wonky rhythm with a solo under it and it just doesn't I want this rhythm gone. It doesn't feel like the same song to me. I don't really like it, so... Hear that? That little is a little, just a little, little ad. Love James is singing here. Very good. He's back to his uh, his good singing, right? He was kind of peak in that late '90s. He fell off with Saint Anger, um, and he's starting to rehab his voice. He's getting back. On the grave which swallows fast. It's peace and laugh. This is kind of showing you what I was talking about, I think, in the end of the line. I talked about how that um, that pattern of the main, the, the boot, 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 dip, boo, um, about how if they played that all the way through, he would always have to emphasize the point. Or was it another song? I don't remember which song it was, but the lead guitar solo, it's really hard to solo over a goofy pattern. And this is what I would describe a goofy pattern. So you find Kirk just going, so every phrase has to start with those hits. That's really limiting as a lead guitarist. You can't really like say if you want what you want to say because you have to be stuck in this certain rhythm and when he starts playing off of that rhythm it feels off because he's not matching it the whole song is fighting with itself and again as an artistic expression that's an interesting way to make a song as a favorite song I want something I can bang my head along to that doesn't pull me out and go whoa where are we right now I don't want to be lost. I want to listen with a smile on my face. So that's that's my point. When you're grading these things, you have to be honest. I love the song. I love the band. It's just when they give me something wonky, I got to give it negative points. That's all. See, you notice how that last part of the solo, when he started kind of letting loose a little bit, it just didn't feel like it mixes well. Now, we're back to the marching riff. Dun, 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 But because we're going to play straight on the drums, he's going to keep the beat. Now Kirk can go and solo like a normal soloist. Battery. Three chords. Cool. That's a five. 
five. Sorry, let's count that again. So one little 5-4 measure in there. We got a nice little build similar to something you would hear on Kill 'Em All and Ride the Lightning. Nice throwback there. Uh, solo's fine. I like it. We have a little element of the pre-chorus in there. Notice we had the stops. Bump, bump, ba-dump, bump. The second time, instead of just bump, bump, ba-bump, bump, he's just doing the first hits. Bump, bump, snare roll into the toms. Changing up that pattern. Here we go. Hey. We got a little mm, from James. Again, pay attention to Lars. on the three interesting three and cool and that's cyanide wow all right uh, let's give this guy some points shall we Whoosh. composition we got verse chorus verse chorus bridge chorus pretty much the same composition of every other song we do have a clean section which is nice uh, but mostly same structure as all their other songs uh, we do have some interesting time signature changes, which is really fresh and very interesting, but I can't say it enough. I think that middle section is really, really weird. It's not uncool. It just feels misplaced. It feels like the wrong place for the song, and it actually drags it down quite a bit for me. So as much as I love the main riff, as much as I love the time signature changes, uh, I can't even say words. I just have a problem with that middle section, so much so that it pulls the song down for me. We can give them more points in the other categories for the catchiness and whatever, but compositionally for me, I feel like the, the song really drops out in that middle. So unfortunately, that's a one. Memorability. On the other hand, I think there's some catchy lyrics. I think the wow, wow, wow. It almost reminds me a little bit of I Disappear. It still has that like wah, that wah attack to it. Wah, wah, wah. Really cool. I think the catchy, uh, the chorus is kind of catchy. I think even that middle section between the weird riffs, that clean part is really cool. I think that the main riff is the star of the show in this one. I could sing that over and over and over every single day. I think that's super memorable. So for me, uh, I think that's where it gets most of its points. Memorability, that's a three. Emotional response. Uh, you've seen it already. I really dropped out in that middle. I did not like it at all. I did not get bored with the song. I just really just didn't like that section. I like the clean parts, but I just want a different bridging riff, a different riff that goes between it. Something that just... Da, 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 just, I don't know, man. I want that to be its own song. It feels separate from this one. So unfortunately, I was really grooving. I was really happy. I was really happy. And then that just sucks the energy out. And yes, they build back into it and that's fine. But I just, I'm so disappointed in that middle section. So um, I don't need this one uh, as much as I need the others. Emotional response, it's a one. Instrumentation. I think they're playing all really, really well. They're uh, using effects. We got some fuzz on the bass. We got some wah guitar. We've got some potentially drop D tuning, but then it's not drop D anymore. But then it's a half step down, but it's not a half step down. We don't know what's happening, really. I'm sure you know what's happening. I'm sure I'm all kinds of wrong, but that low D is a big question for me. Uh, I do love uh, Lars's drumming in this song, how he's changing every single pre chorus and every single chorus. Uh, it's really cool to hear the build from bump, 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 bump bump to just a straight snare roll da, 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 da. even james has got some brilliant singing in this so instrumentally i think they're all doing a great job that's a three 
Lyrics. I think that the middle section is my favorite part of the song. There's some creative writing in the first half with the verses and the chorus, uh, but I really love that say, is that rain or are they tears? What a cool line, right? It's really potent. I think that this song is really kind of fearing the grave, but almost wishing for it at the same time. Daily life can get very difficult. Um, I have a negative, uh, this song has a negative impact on me because I don't like to throw around the word suicide just lightly. I don't think that it fits here. Um, and, and the way that they're talking about it seems like it's almost promoting it. And I know that's not the case, but I need you to consider context. When you're talking about the effects of suicide, this should be a heavy subject. It should be an important subject because there are a lot of people who have chosen suicide as a way out. And that just isn't, I mean, there's just so many better ways. There's so many people that want to help you. I want to help you. I don't know if I have the right words to say it, but I just... I've personally been affected by uh, friends and family and colleagues and people that I know that have fallen to suicide and it is devastating for everyone around them. So I can't just say, oh yeah, suicide, yeah, let's talk about suicide, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like that's not, that's not the feel that I want for that topic. When I want to talk about suicide and the dangers of it and, and the way that it feels, um, I want it to be more somber and I want it to be more serious. This song has that hard rock like, heck yeah. And I don't want anyone listening to go like, yeah, I, you know what? This sounds like a good idea. And like I said, I don't think that they're promoting so suicide. They have had so many songs in the past that we can tell are sort of an ironic take. But just because it could be mis like misinterpreted that way makes it a little scary for me. I don't like that at all. And when I'm thinking about a favorite song, I don't want to just like, yeah, suicide. Like, I don't smile when I hear that word. I get really sad. I get really somber because I remember the people that I've lost. So if you've lost anybody, I, I, I feel for you. My heart goes out to you. I'm here for you. And if you've ever contemplated, please know there are people out there that want to help. That's not the only way. You're not alone in this world. I'm here with you. I support you. And I want to do whatever I can to help you. So if you can't find anybody else, you can reach out to Midnight Notion. We'll have a conversation conversation. I don't know if I have the right language, but I do know that life is really, really, really beautiful. And our brains can sometimes break and make it so hard to see what's beautiful about it. Even when everything around us is falling apart, there's still some very, very wonderful things out there. And I wish that you can enjoy the rest of your life all the way through with me. So let's be here together and let's talk about things. Let's listen to more songs together. Uh, but lyrically, this song, I, I, I have to knock it just for making that topic feel fun, okay? That's it. I'm not saying they're bad lyrics. I'm just saying that the topic at hand needs to be played with a little bit more. It needs to be a little... you got to be careful with this topic. That's all I'm saying. So Cyanide, lyrically, gets a two. And so Cyanide gets a total of 10 points, which is not enough to get to the top 20. I know I promised that whole top 20 was going to change with Deck the Magnetic. I think we're finding that some of these songs maybe don't meet up to the hype. Uh, it is currently in 71st place out of 94. So it's not at the very bottom, but it is a pretty low score. But double digits is still pretty good. It's passing. <laughs> I guess it's failing, I guess, if it's 50%. Either way, um, I'm not too upset about it. I didn't think this was going to be rated very high anyway, and I hope that you understand why I grade it so low. Let's take a look at that top 20 anyway. We got one on top. We got, uh, we've got a uh, uh, really, really great list here. Uh, a couple of ties, so I'm going to need to know what to do with those ties. And of course, I'm going to need to know what your score is. It's your turn. In the comments below, using my system, grade it. Really do the math. Start a spreadsheet of your own and find out what score you would give this song. I want to know in the comments. I also want to know what sort of music you'd like me to go on to after we're done with Hardwired because we're getting towards the end here. So let me know and uh, check out Midnight Notion. My music is available all over the internet. Even though I might not like this song very much, you might find some songs that sound similar to it. Maybe. And of course, smash that subscribe button because tomorrow the trilogy comes to an end. Or does it? I guess we don't really know. We'll find out tomorrow. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.